Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and today we're going to be talking about games that Nintendo could possibly or maybe even likely be revealing this summer. That's right, Nintendo might not be done with revealing 2022 games, and we'll tell you why. Also, we have news on another event happening by a company who has traditionally supported Nintendo, a major third-party company doing their own event this summer in August. It's going to be really exciting as obviously we are all sitting back waiting for Summer Game Fest and Jeff Keighley to announce his dates. Apparently it's going to be a week-long event. We'll get into that in a moment as well. If this is the first time you've seen a Nintendo Prime video, I would appreciate if you would drop a like, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, and uh, yeah, before we uh, say anything else, I want to let you hear a word from our sponsor. This is Timmy, and Timmy is having a hard time dealing with the constant drifting issues Nintendo Switch's controller options provide. It's okay, Timmy. I was able to pick up another controller for you at our local Walmart. Oh darn, it's missing features like Amiibo, and what's this? It won't stay connected. It's okay, Timmy. I have one more controller for you to try. This is the King Kong 2 wireless controller, and it's working flawlessly. The Ghoulie Kick King Kong 2 wireless controller for Nintendo Switch is the first premium controller for Switch to feature the Hall Effect sensor joysticks. These are joysticks that use magnets instead of contact points to provide a zero drift experience. They also didn't want to just take care of drift, they wanted to provide a zero compromise solution. The controller is wireless, it has rumble, it has full motion controls with the new custom motion sense, and yes, they even included Amiibo functionality, and because it's Bluetooth, it can be used with your PC. You can get this controller for yourself with the Amazon link down below. Now, let's go see how Timmy is doing. Hey Timmy, are you happy with your new Switch controller? And again, I want to thank Ghoulie King Kong Pro 2 controller uh, for sponsoring this video. This controller is actually uh, personally one of my favorite controllers that I have ever used on Switch. Uh, I literally haven't used anything else since it arrived. Remember to use that Amazon link down in the description. What's great about Amazon, and I didn't mention this in the ad, uh, was, hey, you know what? Amazon gives you the hassle-free, worry-free ordering process because, you know, you don't like the controller. You could just get a refund. They even advertise this all the time on Twitter, the official account for this company. So anyways, let's get into what we're going to talk about today, the main topics. And look, first off, let's start with this summer. So look, we all know this summer is going to be a big one for video game news. Yes, E3 was canceled, but E3, you know, the biggest deal with E3 isn't even the press conferences. E3 itself is a trade show. And Honestly, we haven't had a trade show since 2019, and it sounds like, uh, yeah, there was a bit of a hot mess happening in 2020 if there was going to be a trade show, aka if the pandemic didn't happen. And I found this out by listening to Jeff Keeley. He did a Twitter space back on April Fool's Day of all things, but this wasn't a joke, where he was taking a bunch of questions about his summer event called Summer Game Fest, and we learned a bunch of things about this that could pertain to Nintendo and the industry on the whole, and one of it was obviously that E3 was sort of in hot water once PlayStation backed out of it back in 2019. That was the first year that Sony was like, sorry, we're done. We don't like the direction of E3. We're not going to participate, uh, and that was you know, sort of the first massive hammer on the head to E3, and then you know the pandemic hit, and it sounds like whatever they were planning for 2020 was not going well, and the ESA has maybe kind of lost the ball when it comes to running industry events. We'll see. I know the ESA has dedicated themselves to doing an in-person E3 in 2023. Uh, but if they can't get Sony, Xbox, and Nintendo all together, uh, I'm not so sure that it's really going to go that well for them. But that doesn't really matter because we also learned through this that Summer Game Fest is going to be roughly a week long. Now, 
When he says a week long, he doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be seven days full of nonstop gaming news, but there will be a kickoff event, and then he is going to uh, obviously let these companies sort of organize their own events. So it sounds like what Summer Game Fest is going to be this year is basically what we're used to with E3 in the past, except spread out over more days. So if you like E3 press conferences, that's basically what this event's going to be. It's going to have a kickoff event with a bunch of game reveals that are going to tease other things, and then there's going to be separate individual events for different companies so like the pc gaming show or microsoft doing its own thing or a nintendo direct if nintendo participates playstation doing its own press conference you're going to see ubisoft do its own press conference so it sounds like a lot of what e3 used to be except not jam-packed into a two or three day slate but instead spread out over a week which is interesting because it actually enables there to be more companies involved uh, besides just the big ones. So in the past at E3, we've always focused on the EA press conference, the Ubisoft press conference, Bethesda, Microsoft, Nintendo, PlayStation. And those were really the only ones that got a lot of pub. Devolver Digital did as well over a bit of time because they ended up doing some pretty hilarious ones, including last year at Summer Game Fest. They had a really hilarious one. Uh, but this does allow more companies to participate in this since it's spread out over a week instead of just trying to pack everything in to a three-day slate. Uh, and I, I suspect that this is going to end up where a major company is going to like try to dedicate a whole day. Like, let's say Summer Game Fest, the kickoff event lands on a Monday. You know, Let's say Tuesday, Microsoft wants to be the big company that goes that day, and then maybe there's a couple other indie companies that you know throw out their own events that day as well. And let's say PlayStation wants to end the event on Friday or whatever. So we'll see how it's all going to line up, and it sounds like the dates are going to be announced really, really soon. And the way that Jeff Keighley views Summer Game Fest and the way that he could umbrella all these companies' events around it is he wanted to find a way to take all of the companies that want to unveil stuff this summer and organize it in a way that's easier to consume for people who want to consume and not miss any of this gaming news in a semi-shorter period of time rather than, hey, when's the next Nintendo Direct going to happen? When's the next Microsoft event? When's the next this? When's the next... You'll know because it'll all be neatly organized under the Summer Game Fest umbrella. So I, I kind of like this approach. And again, we don't know if Nintendo's participating in in Summer Game Fest. They're not listed as a partner company yet. And unfortunately, in that Twitter space that Jeff Keighley did, uh, none of the people he brought on asked him the direct question, has he been talking to Nintendo? They aren't a partner company yet, but it would have been, I think, a neat question to ask. Hey, you know, have you had conversations with Nintendo on them possibly participating in Summer Game Fest? Hopefully that is something that comes up in the future or just gets announced. Now, all of that being said, uh, what are we talking about with summer games getting unveiled this summer? Well, on the Nate the Hate podcast, we talked yesterday about how, yeah, it sounded like MVG, you know, Modern Vintage Gamer, and Nate the Hate both had independent sources from Ubisoft that seemed to be confirming a late, uh, you know, a, 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 a pretty solid late 2022 release date for Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope, but they also talked in this podcast about things they're hearing about that could be announced this summer. And, you know, one thing they heard is potentially packaging together the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. Now, this builds on old rumors from last year, you know, from people like Jeff Grubb. So it would be really interesting to see if they would be willing to package those games together because they actually would probably sell really well on their own and no other wii u ports really been packaged together with another wii u game so it would be strange to see twilight princess and wind waker hd together uh as a one package but nintendo could also look at this as hey this is our last opportunity to get both of these games out on switch and packaging them together uh would just make sense and make it a great value buy for the summer uh so they could potentially announce that at a June Nintendo Direct. But more than that, uh, they actually dive into a few other things that could be announced during a June Direct. And this is where we get to maybe some of the more juicy stuff, and that being Metroid Prime Remake. Now, some one of them had heard it's still a trilogy, one had heard it's just a Metroid Prime 1 remake. Either way, they suspect that it's going to get announced at this event, and that could potentially be another game that somehow gets slotted into Nintendo's already packed slate. Obviously, they talked about how Splatoon 3 is still on target as well. So I found all of that to be 
really, really interesting on setting our expectations for what Nintendo could announce that could still be this year. Uh, they didn't really dive too much into what Nintendo could announce for next year, although they did note that there could be a revision of hardware somewhere in the mix still at Nintendo, and that they're hearing that next generation will be 2024 or beyond. Uh, take that for what it is. These are obviously not people that have direct knowledge. Modern Vintage Gamer is an actual game developer, but you know he's noted several times he doesn't have any um, newer dev kits himself, and that because of the companies he works for being smaller indie studios, they likely would not have those sorts of dev kits early until it's already announced. That being said, we also know about another major summer event happening, and this is really cool because THQ Nordic has announced a digital showcase for August. So as announced today, the event will be happening on August 12th. Uh, it's happening at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. So for me, that's 2 p.m. Central time. It'll be 8 p.m. in the UK and 9 p.m. in Europe. Uh, and yeah, it sounds like we're going to get a bunch of games shown here, including another look at SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake, which is supposedly coming to Switch. We'll see. We did get you know, other SpongeBob games, but there's going to probably be a, 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 you know, a handful of THQ Nordic games that are likely going to be coming to Switch. They have actually done a good job supporting Switch so far. No, this isn't the THQ of old, but it, it, the, THQ Nordic's actually done quite a good job revitalizing and doing a lot with franchises. Obviously, people want to know if, if there'll be another Darksiders or what other surprises there could be. Uh, but hey, we now we know it's going to happen in August. This obviously is not happening around the same time as Summer Game Fest. So that is giving us a, a different event to look forward to. But hey, that's an end of summer event. You know, Summer Game Fest is the beginning of summer event. I think that this works really, really well. And we're going to get a ton of games announced for Nintendo Switch. In fact, go down to the comments below and tell me what THQ Nordic games do you want to see and which ones do you think will be coming to switch now all of that being said i want to thank you guys so much for tuning in i am nathaniel ruffle jans from nintendo prime and i want to uh use the end of this uh show here to just give a shout out to my son uh good old timmy obviously his name isn't actually timmy uh but i want to thank my son for for being a true professional for that sponsored segment today. He had a lot of fun. And this is the first ever sponsored segment that I've included anyone uh, in my house in. Uh, it was a complete original idea that I had to kind of do an infomercial style uh, show like that and, and to use, uh, you know, or, or not really use, ask one of my children if they would like to participate. And he was taking direction like a champ. Uh, he listened. He did everything uh, the way that I wanted him to. And it, it really worked out really well. And also a shout out to my fiance for being the camera woman uh, this time around. And, 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 you know, as I was literally playing a director role, I don't know that I've ever done a director role before because I'm usually the one that's on camera making it all happen. I'm not usually the one behind the camera trying to direct and, and explain things. And, 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 you know, I was reading off partial scripts to kind of give a feel to it. And it, it was a lot of fun. Um, and you guys let me know what you thought about that ad spot as well. I haven't done a lot of ad spots like that, and I don't know how many more of them I'm going to be doing like that because they do take a lot more time to put together. Uh, but that's how much I really believe in this controller. I know I can't, you know, you got to take everything I say about this controller with a massive grain of salt because the company did pay me to advertise it. But uh, this is, for my money, the best Switch controller I've ever used. And uh, no drift, They're just... Oh, there, there, there's so many good features about this. The rumble has five different settings. The triggers, you know, I don't, I'm not going to go into all the features right now. Um, maybe we'll do a dedicated video on it, but it's tough for me. I got this mental block where I shouldn't do that because they paid me. So it's impossible for you to say you're unbiased. Uh, all I can say is I'm never using any other, you know, standard controller again for Switch but this one. So that's uh, my personal take. All right, folks. That's it. I'll catch you guys in the next video.